the Lord says, I not only want to restore what you've lost, I want to restore you. I want to restore your heart. I want to restore your confidence. I want to restore your joy, your peace. I want to make an example out of your life so that other people can say, that's what I want God to do in my life. One word from God can change your life forever. Well, hello, friends. My name is Jerry Dearman, and on behalf of all the congregations of The Rock, I want to wish you a very warm and Merry Christmas. Did you know that that first Christmas, when Jesus was born, that God sent a message through an angel to a young girl named Mary? And God has opened my eyes to the fact that that message is still speaking to us today. I want you to open up your heart and let the Lord bring a Christmas message to you. You're about to hear something that is fresh from heaven today. I'm telling you, this, this ministered to me so much. And I know God is going to minister this word to you today. Luke chapter 1 is the beginning of the, after genealogy, it's the beginning of the Christmas story. I got down and started reading about the 26th verse, and the Holy Spirit began to speak this to me in a way that I've never heard it before. Not just a study of the Bible and a different truth from the Bible, but I mean talking to me. He had something to say to me and spoke this in a way that I, I've never heard it before. And I mean, I knew this was to Jerry in real time, but I also knew as he was unpacking this and unfolding it layer by layer, I knew this was not just for Jerry. This was for all of us. This was for all of us. I mean a timely word. So I want you to open up your heart to receive from God today because I want to go through this passage and then I want to show you what the Lord said to me and I know that I know that I know that you're going to hear the Lord speak to you today. Are you ready for this? Here's the passage. Let me read it and then I'll walk through it point by point. In Luke chapter 1, verse 26, Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. And then let me skip down to verse 45 of prophecy from Elizabeth, blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. Now that's what I expected to happen. We read through it. We remember the story. Oh, that's a great story. Precious. We've studied it many times from uh, various angles and such. And that, that's what I thought would happen. And then we go on with the reading. But that's not what happened. You see, because the Holy Spirit, when he inspired Luke, to write the Gospel of Luke, knew that there would be a pastor fasting and praying that needed to hear a word from God. And when he inspired that text originally, he not only inspired Luke to write this to Theophilus so that he could have a chronologically orderly account of the things that happened in the life and ministry of Jesus, but he also embedded messages for those of us that are listening to the Word of God with open hearts and ears to say, God, but what are you saying to me too? I mean, I want to know the facts and the history. I want to know about the life of Jesus. I want to understand what he did, how he did it, what he said, how he said it. 
But Lord, while I'm reading, I need to know what you're saying about me and my family and me and my business and me and my career and me and the mistakes that I've made and where I am, my finances and my health. Lord, I've got some questions. In fact, I think I told you that I wrote well over 50 questions that I wanted to ask the Lord about in about, oh, maybe 15 to 20 categories. If anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. Well, why do we ask God questions and not expect to receive answers? Jesus said, ask and it will be given. So I asked and so here I am just minding my own business, reading the Bible, and the Holy Spirit interrupts me and says, you did ask, didn't you? And I want to show you what he said to me, and I want you to be ready because the Holy Spirit is in this place today. I know that I know that I know that he has things to say. In verse 28, the angel Gabriel came to Mary, and he said this, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. When I read that, Rejoice, highly favored one, a quickening of the Holy Spirit inside of me, and I knew... Yes, he said that to Mary, but I knew that moment he was saying that to me. And he wasn't just saying that to me on that day, like today, Jerry, I'm telling you that you're highly favored. I knew just that fast. This is how things in the spirit work. You know things that it didn't take a lot of words to explain. You just know. By the Holy Spirit, you just know. And what I knew the Lord was saying was not that I'm telling you you're highly favored today, but I knew the Lord was saying no it was over 30 years ago that I met you when you were bound. Yeah. And I ministered to you and spoke to you and told you you were highly favored before you ever saw it in your life. Before you ever saw evidence of it. Before you ever felt strength. Before you ever had wisdom or knowledge or experience. Before you had credibility or a reputation that anybody would aspire to attach with. I spoke to you and I told you you were highly favored. See, I just knew it just like that. I stopped in my tracks and my eyes got watery because I knew the Lord was saying, it wasn't just Mary that I came to, I came to you. And I told you you were highly favored. He said, rejoice, highly favored one. And then he said this, the Lord is with you. And I knew those words were drilling down into my soul. He's with you. He's still with you. He hasn't departed. The highly favored word that he gave you many years ago is still here. It was reaffirmed in January 99 when, when the Lord told you to start this church and what he would do in this church. You were highly favored to receive that word. But now the word is coming to you on this day. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. And this phrase, blessed are you among women, I knew that the Lord was saying to me, do you know how blessed you are? You're not just like everybody else. I highly favored you. I spoke to you. I gave you words. See, when God gives you a word, he's delivering to you the power to walk that word out because God never lies. When he speaks it, he's committing his power, his resources, his ability to carry it out. He's revealing to you his will for your life. So how can anybody overrule it if God's the one saying, this is what I want to happen for you? This is why it's so precious to hear a word from God, to know what God is saying, and not just by logic and reason to make your plans, but actually to hear the Lord say something. And I knew the Lord was speaking to me. And as we went on, I began to realize, oh, yes, this is for me, but it's not just for me. The Lord is saying that because it's not just a person here or there that's highly favored. It's many throughout the body of Christ, all who will open up their hearts and yield themselves to the Lord to hear him speak. And so many of you, as I'm talking, you know in your heart, you're thinking, yeah, I've heard the Lord too. The Lord has said some things to me then today he's saying to you, then you know that you're highly favored. Do you realize how blessed you are that the Almighty has spoken a word to you and he has not gone back from that word. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. You're blessed among human beings. You're blessed among mankind. Look at verse 30. 
the angel said, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. I knew the Lord was saying to me, I mean, I might as well just scratch out Mary and put Jerry. <laughs> and I didn't do that. <laughs> I don't scratch out words from the Bible, and you shouldn't either. I underline them and circle them, but I can't write my name beside them because the Lord is saying, Blessed are you. Blessed are you. Do not be afraid, Mary. Do not be afraid, Jerry. Put your name in there. Do not be afraid, for you have found favor with God. If you realize you found favor with God, you don't have anything to be afraid about. Amen. I say when you realize and remember that you have favor with God, whatever it is that was making you afraid should stop making you afraid. Why? I've got favor with God. I've got favor with God. God is saying this to you. Look at verse 31. And verses 31 to 33 really hit me in a way that I've never heard before. Let me read it this way. The angel said, And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Boy, when I read that, it's like those words, he will, and there will be, and it will happen. Amen. You know, th those things just, oh, I mean, just down in my spirit, just, oh, just like, like sh injections of confidence and strength. You know why? Because this angel, you got to know what an angel is. An angel, the word angel just means messenger. In fact, in our Bible, the word angel is really not an English word. I mean, it is now but it's really just a transliteration of the Greek word. And so you just take that word angel and transliterate it over. And in other words, you take English letters and help the English reader to know basically how to pronounce this Greek word. And we have a number of words in the Bible. Christ is another one. That's not an English word. That's a Greek word that is Christos that now it's helping us to to sound that out with our letters because we use different letters in these different alphabets. And so this word angel just means messenger. In other words, whatever this angel is saying, that's what God is saying to Mary. So this angel is now coming and we can say God is saying to Mary, no, you will bear a son and he will reign over the house of David and he will be called the son of the highest and he will and it will and it will. And I'm telling you, when I began to read that, Oh, ho, ho, ho. the Holy Spirit was ministering to me and saying that word that I gave you back then that still looks like it requires supernatural help to come to pass, it will come to pass. Amen. You will see it happen. Amen. It shall play out. Does anybody hear what I'm saying? Yeah. See, this is, this is the Holy Spirit speaking. This is the Holy Spirit speaking. Don't go by what you see. Don't go by the strength that you think you have or the circumstance that you find yourself in. The Holy Spirit is speaking. It will happen. No, it shall happen. See, this is God saying it forcefully with an absoluteness that should remove all doubt. Why is he saying this to Mary? So she doesn't doubt. No, it will happen. He will be called the son of the highest. God will give him the throne of his father David. And of his kingdom there will be no end. There will be no end. God is saying, I will bring this to pass. I will bring this to pass. And the Lord's saying to you about your word, I will bring it to pass. Don't you worry about what it looked like. I'm telling you today, I will bring it to pass. Now listen to this. This really got me. And this, this is when I really knew, oh man, this is not just for me. Look at verse 34. Then Mary said to the angel, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you how I got it. Ready? Ready? Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be since? Now see, she's got her own story. Since I've never had intimacy with a man. But it's like the Holy Spirit just stopped right there. How can this be since? See, everybody fills in their own blank. I mean, look at my life. Look how many years it's been. Look at the mistakes I've made. Look at what's happened to me. Look at the limitations that I have. Look at my lack of education or reputation. Look at my lack of charisma or influence. Or look what people are saying about me. 
How can this be since? God, you're speaking this word, but it's impossible. How can it be since? And I wonder what's in your blank today. How you finish that sentence today. It's an honest question from Mary. I don't have the physiological capability to bear a child. I've never been intimate with a man. How, how can that be? Since it's impossible. And you may be asking that same question today. And very clearly, the Holy Spirit answered it. Look at verse 35. Listen to this. And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. Lord, how can this be that you're going to do this in my life? Here's the answer. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. <laughs> the Holy Spirit will come upon you. That's how. That's how. It's not going to be because all of a sudden you became highly educated. All of a sudden you became twice as articulate or influential or wealthy. No. He said, here's how it's going to happen. The Holy Spirit shall come upon you. You remember what Acts 1.8 says? Jesus said, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Hey, Amen. Just like the Holy Spirit came on Mary. The Lord says the Holy Spirit's coming on you. Not by might, nor by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Zechariah 4, 6. You remember Romans 8, 31? If God is for us, what does the Bible say? Who can be against us? See, the Lord's speaking all throughout this place today. And everybody listening to the sound of my voice. And the Lord's saying, I'll tell you how it's going to happen. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and bring these things to pass. Now listen to verse 38. Then Mary said, oh, this is so good. Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Let it be. Now you remember in Genesis, I told you that the way this whole thing happened was that God came and said, let there be light. Bam, there was light. And let there be a firmament, and it was so. And let the dry land appear, and it was so. And let it be, and it was so. Let it be, and it was so. But everything changed in verse 26 when he said, let's make man according to our image and give them the dominion. And then God starts talking to man and giving man word. Be fruitful, multiply. Well, what does man need to say? Let it be. Let it be. So what happens here? This angel comes to Mary and brings her the word from God. You will conceive. You will bear a son. He will inherit the throne of David. He will be called the son of the highest. And what's her response? Let it be. Amen. Let it be. I mean, she does exactly what she ought to do. And she doesn't do what Eve did and try to rehearse it and repeat it. Because Eve kind of fouled it up and got it wrong, didn't she? <laughs> Listen to what Mary did. Mary said, let it be to me according to your word. <laughs> In other words, exactly what you said, let that be. I'm not even going to try to say it again. I might mess it up. Isn't that right? Let it be to me according to your word. And listen to this. And the angel departed from her. See, that ministered to me, and the angel departed from her. I never had thought about that before. You know why he departed? That's what he needed to hear. That's what he needed to hear. Because until she said it, it wasn't in the earth yet. A human being had not used his or her dominion to take the word of God and the promise of God and to speak it into the earth so that angels can be set to flight. You remember Psalm 103, verse 20, Bless the Lord, you his angels, you ministers of his, who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. This angel was waiting for the word to be voiced. And so he brought the message from God to one who was in authority on this earth, a human being who had been given dominion and waiting for her to see what she was going to say. And what did she say? Let it be according to your word. And the angel said, that's what I needed to hear. And he went to get, get it to go, come to pass. Amen. Amen. And let me tell you, when she said, let it be to me according to your word, it released the same power of God as when God said, let there be light, and there was light. Yes. She was taking that word of God and using her dominion to say what God said will happen in my life. What God said will happen in this earth. 
And then as you know, Elizabeth prophesied, blessed is she who believed for there will be a fulfillment. Why? Because to say let it be, you have to believe it. Otherwise you'll say, well, how's that going to happen? I don't know what's, I mean, gee, well, I wish. Sometimes I'll say to people, hey, God's got something good for you. And they'll say, well, I sure hope so. <laughs> See the difference? See the difference? Let it be to me according to your word. Let it be to me. I remember July the 23rd, 2008. We were in negotiations for this building. And we thought we'd had it all secured, but we hadn't signed contracts yet. And I was on a missions trip with some members of our team here in Jinja, Uganda. And I was in my little hotel room there. And I remember I was sitting on my bed. My computer was open over here on the other side. And I pulled out my Bible to begin to read the daily reading. And I heard an email come through, so I glanced over to see what it was. And it was an email from one of our pastors here that said that this whole deal had come unraveled and that part of the agreement that we had made that the person on the other side was yanking that out of the agreement and it, so the deal had really soured. Well, I went back to reading and I was reading in the book of Isaiah. And in the book of Isaiah, chapter 37... I began to read about Hezekiah and how Sennacherib was coming against him and saying, I'm going to destroy Jerusalem and your God's not going to be able to help you and such and sent a letter to him. Well, I'd just gotten an email. And Hezekiah took that letter and spread it out before the Lord. And the word of the Lord came and spoke to him. And here's what it says in verse 29. Therefore, I will put my hook in your nose and my bridle in your lips, and I will turn you back by the way which you came. In other words, he was talking to that king and that king's representative who was attacking Jerusalem. And God says, no, no, what you're trying to do, that's not, I'm going to put a hook in your nose and reel you back in. You're going back where you came from. Boy, I mean, I knew. See, listen, I'm just reading the Bible. But I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit ministered to me so strongly. I got back from my trip. I announced to the whole church, every service, five or actually four services at that time. We hadn't quite gone to five. Four services. Told everybody, listen, the deal kind of fell apart, but the Lord spoke to me in Jinjin, Uganda, and said, I put a hook in his nose, and I'm going to... Lead him back, he's going to turn right back, and the deal's going to be back on the table. Let me tell you something. That was on a Sunday. I told everybody the Lord spoke to me. See, when you know God speaks to you, you're not afraid. I told everybody. By the next Sunday, the deal was all signed and delivered, done. They went right back to what they said. Why? Because God said so. That's why. Now, see, you didn't find the rock in that passage. You didn't find our church's name or any of that. No, but the Holy Spirit quicken those words and I knew God has spoken to me. Are you listening to me? It was just as real and just as solid to me. But let me tell you what I did. I said, let it be. I said, let it be. Got up and said it to everybody. This is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. I mean, just predicted it. Just predicted it. Well, I wouldn't have done that had I not received a clear word from God. Does everybody hear what I'm saying? Listen to me. The Lord's speaking to you today, and the Lord's telling you, I'm, I've given you a word. Some of you, you're getting the word today. You're hearing what God is saying today. But the Lord is saying, but what is your response? How do you talk about it? What do you say? Do you say, let it be? Do you say, let it be? Because, see, heaven, the angels are waiting to see what dominion you're going to release with your mouth. What are you going to say? I sure hope so. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? No. Or are you going to say, Lord, even though it looks impossible, I don't know how that's going to happen because I believe in my heart that you're saying this to me. Then, Lord, I say, let it be. Let it be, Lord, according to your word. Let it be, Lord, according to your word.
did you hear what God said to Mary and what God's saying to you? You are highly favored. The Lord is with you. You are blessed among men. Do not be afraid. You have found favor with God and you will fulfill your calling. And then he said, I will bring it to pass. And blessed are you who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told you from the Lord. And then listen to Mary's response and what should be our response. Lord, let it be to me according to your word. You see, this is how it works with God. He comes and he speaks things to us that we know we don't deserve. Things that are beyond us. Things that are by his grace. And what he's looking for us to do is not to try to earn it, but to receive it like a Christmas gift. Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And this is what we should do today. This is what you should do. Receive this gift this Christmas. God, I know you're speaking to me. God, I know you love me. I'm not alone. I'm not on my own. I don't have to earn it. You want to bless me. You want to help me. You want to provide for me. You want to heal me. And then we say, Lord, let it be to me according to your word. I pray that this Christmas, what God is speaking to you, will actually be fulfilled, not because you earned it, but because you believe it. And by grace, you just receive it. May the Lord bless you and your family this Christmas season. We love you, and we'll see you next time. We are so glad you've joined us today for Solid Life with Jerry Dearman. Our prayer is that you've been inspired to believe that God is always faithful to fulfill His promises in your life. If you have a prayer request or testimony you would like to share, visit us online at jerrydearman.com. Write to us at Jerry Dearman Ministries, P.O. Box 4970, Anaheim, California, 92803, or call us at 1-800-544-8000. If you or someone you know is in the Southern California area, we'd love to have you join us for services this weekend. The Rock is located at 295 East Orange Thorpe Avenue in Anaheim with service times on Sundays at 9 and 11.30 a.m. and Sunday Night Live at 6 p.m. Spanish and Vietnamese services are also available. Go to jerrydearman.com for more information or for one of our other locations nationwide. We have exciting Treasure Island and J12 for Kids dedicated to raising up a generation that will change our world. We offer impactful services for kids of all ages with anointed worship and life-changing teaching. For more information about The Rock or Jerry Dearman Ministries, visit us online at jerrydearman.com or call us at 1-800-544-8000.